What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com, bulging discs, herniated discs, ruptured discs, bad backs, blown out backs. You've heard all the terms before, but what does it actually mean? Today I want to show you guys exactly what it means right here on our skeleton, and more importantly, tell you how you can make sure in your own training that you're doing the right things or avoiding the wrong things to try to give yourself the best shot of never having this happen to you. Now right off the bat, I think it's very important to clarify Bulging discs and herniated discs can happen to anybody at any time. You don't have to be in the gym to have this happen. So that means that any exercise can cause one of these situations to happen. It can happen quickly. But there are a few things that will lead ourselves to this situation much more frequently. And those are the things I want to help to fortify you guys against with this video. So first of all, let's take a little bit of a closer look inside to see exactly what's going on so you can understand that and then we'll come back out of it and talk about some of the situations that you might want to make sure you're extra careful of when you are training. Alright, so let's go handheld here so I can show you exactly what's going on. What you'll see here is the spine. Okay, We have a series of vertebrae here that stack on top of each other as you guys probably know and they're broken down into the different levels of the spine that we hear so often, right? Cervical spine from here down through the neck and then we have our thoracic spine that comes down through our mid back and then we have our five lumbar vertebrae that make up our lower back, okay? Now come back around to the front when we talk about the discs you can see these brown uh, structures right here in between provide spacing and padding between our vertebrae when they're healthy and natural, okay, in a natural state. Well, what happens is when we have a herniation, you can look down here, you actually get a leakage of the material that's inside the, the disc, it calls the, uh, the nucleus propulsus, right? As this thing comes out and squishes out, it literally is like a jelly donut effect. This would be a nice intact jelly donut. If you were to squeeze it, then it would bleed out this uh, inner disc material that then, as you can see, pushes and hits one of these nerve roots that then travels down to the you know throughout the body right down to our lower extremities we have different dermatomes that these different nerve roots run to so when we train if we were to have some sort of an injury and I'll, and I'll cover again what some of these activities might be that could cause this a little bit more often than others you once you get the leakage if it's not touching on a nerve root that's when you have basically a bulging disc or a herniated disc that may not again be symptomatic because it may not be touching on the nerve root but as soon as this this material right here contacts the nerve root, you're going to get symptoms down that, that dermatome, wherever that might go. And that's what it would explain for some people that wind up complaining of hip pain or knee pain or thigh pain or even numbness or tingling down the toes because it depends again on what level and what nerve root this is pushing on. Alright, so back in the real world here, what we really care about as guys lifting uh, we want to know what are the activities that might lead to this situation more often than others. And again, there's any exercise at any time can cause this, but the issue is we want to make sure that we fortify ourselves, as I said, as much as we can. The first thing, guys, core strength. We need to know that we have the appropriate core strength, and it's not just your abs. Guys, please, you guys know that abs alone are not your core. Your, your abs are just one portion of your core, your hips your lateral trunk flexors and, and stabilizers are going to be incredibly important to contributing to your overall stability. So side planks and, and, and other exercises that incorporate more than just your crunching activities of your ab abdominal muscles is going to be key to fortifying that core to make sure you have the stability of your entire trunk. But that being said, the biggest culprit for creating one of these herniations in your low back is going to be a combination of flexion and rotation in the, spine, in the lumbar spine at the same time and more so loaded flexion and extension. So what exercise would that naturally be? That could be a deadlift. Now deadlifts are probably one of the best exercises you can possibly do especially as a trainer to, to athletes we know the value of a deadlift, the functional value of a deadlift is unparalleled. But one of the other areas that I've covered on the squat before is the positioning of the hips. So when I take this dowel in front of me, if you're deadlifting, you have to be very, very careful that not just your feet are square on the ground, but that your hips are square as well. So if your feet are lined up straight ahead here, but my hips are open to here, you can see that. Now, if I go to do my deadlift out of that position, I'm essentially rotated here to the left. 
So even though it's a subtle thing, we are combining flexion with rotation. That would be something you definitely want to be aware of and alert for to make sure that that's not happening to you. Next we want to talk about the squat and yet again another great exercise obviously for building lower body strength and power but it is another one that can leave us susceptible to a lower back issue especially if we already have a predisposing thing going on in, the, in our low backs that's because you get that tendency to get a rapid flexion extension if you have a butt wink. We've covered why we think that might happen in other videos but the butt wink is going to be a rapid change in pelvic position from that anterior tilt to the posterior tilt and then back in the anterior and that's under load, like under load of the back squat, the weight that you got on your back. That anterior position is fine, so when you get to that posterior position you're getting a rapid flexion of your lumbar spine and again we talked about it's one of the components minus the rotation that could cause an issue. The same thing I just covered with the deadlift, if the hips are open and not square you're going to get a rotary effect of the pelvis too so the butt wink with unsquare hips is going to cause even twice the issues that we might have otherwise. Now, what can we do to try to make sure that that doesn't happen to us? Well, first of all, we can work on that butt wink. And secondly, what we can do is we can work on other versions of squats. I'm a big proponent of single leg squats. Why? Because they allow us to continue to, to load up the weight, not have to necessarily sacrifice our overall strength in our legs, which is one of the things that winds up happening when guys want to drop down the weights on a back squat to be able to execute in perfect form if the butt wink is their limiting factor they might be dropping the weights to levels that are below that which would challenge your legs and actually help them to continue to overload but if you do a single leg version you might be able to still tap into your strength and max out on your strength while at the same time protecting the low back because if and when I say single leg, I'm talking more about Bulgarian variation. So you put your leg up behind you. As soon as you put your leg behind you, you're actually flattening the low back. You're creating a much flatter, much more stable lumbar spine. So when you go down in the flexion, that lumbar spine stays where it needs to be and it stays well supported. Well, again, at the same time, not sacrificing the overall strength of your legs and quads while you're while, while you're training your legs. So. Guys, again, anything can cause a low back issue. Anything can cause a disc to, to herniate or, or bulge in its earlier stages. The thing is, you want to make sure that you're doing the things that you can to prevent that from happening by training the right way. At AthleanX, as a physical therapist, I put together a strength and conditioning program that does this, allows you guys to train and train hard and to train at your max, but at the same time have a healthy respect for how we're going to get there and make sure that we do it in a smart way so that we're limiting the things that can happen to you and injure you and keep you in the gym because the only way you're ever going to get strong, the only way you're going to see progressive results is if you stay in that gym and continue to train day in, day out, right? So that's what we do. That's over at AthleanX.com. It's our complete 90-day training program. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful and you see we break out the skeleton and every time we do, you guys tend to like these videos, just let me know and I'll keep making more. And whatever other issues are bothering you, I'll try to break him out to explain why it is that that might be happening to uh, make it a little bit more useful for you. Thanks guys.